If you are an accidental salesperson or you have a team of accidental salespeople, and what I mean by that is people who are thrust into the role of selling and discovering opportunities with current clients or new prospects, and you're a technical person, listen up. This is a really good episode. I'm Bill Kasky. Welcome to the Bill Kasky Podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Make sure that you check out our personal business planning workshop on December 6th. In the show notes, there is a link to a page where you'll get all the information about that. It's a $97 tuition. It's a two-hour program, plus there's a video before we go live. And I want you to finish that, that session with a really good comprehensive plan for 2024 for your business. Salesperson, business owner, VP of sales, Anybody can take part in this. It's on December 6th from 12 to 2 Eastern. You know, uh, I put out to my LinkedIn uh, group, my LinkedIn connections this week, does this topic make sense? This idea of the non-sales professional. And and it seems like every company has non-sales professionals today, or what we call accidentals. And it, it could be SaaS companies, it could be obviously consulting companies and accounting and law firms. And there's a lot of people inside your company that might um, be, it might be useful for them to develop skills to generate more business, but that's not really on their business card. And so I want to talk about some ways today to do that. Plus, I get a lot of calls from organizations. I've gotten three probably in the last month from companies who have this exact issue. Salespeople, great. Yeah, can there be some tweaking and some improvement? Of course, but it's my non-sales people. It's my subject matter experts who really need some sales skills. So we're going to go through three today, a little bit in depth, and then I'm going to give you a couple other bonus ones. And, and by the way, share this with everybody inside your company. It, you know, you probably may have 100, 200, 300 people inside your company that uh, this kind of information could be useful for. So go ahead and share it with them. Okay, ready? Let's do this. The first thing I think we need to talk about is why it's so hard for them to embrace sales. And I, I was on the phone uh, last week with the CEO of a company. I've got a couple hundred people in that role. And he says, you know, we just can't get our people to, to do this. And they struggle with even being called a salesperson. They struggle with the act of communicating value. They feel like they're intruding or they feel like they're manipulating. And he says, we never put any pressure on them, but we just can't get them to do anything. And I heard that from a lot of the LinkedIn people who, uh, I'm not going to go through name by name, but a lot of those people had the same uh, issue. So what is it? What is it? What's really happening there? What's really happening is that we have a very uh, old, antiquated definition of what sales is. And if your people are giving you that line of, well, you know, wait a minute, I'm not in sales, so we'll let somebody else do that. That is just a code for, I'm afraid to look like the person that I grew up with in the 70s and 80s, who was not the kind of person I wanted to be, a salesperson. It's just old and antiquated. That, that whole idea is worn out today. Now, if you hire a a coach to come in and teach them the old stuff, I don't blame them for being resistant. So whatever you do, whether you hire me or hire somebody like me, don't teach them how to be salespeople. Teach them how to be what they're already good at, which is problem finders, problem solvers, problem uh, maybe uh, analyst, analysis experts. Teach them how to take that virtue and turn it into something that you can they can talk to their prospects about. Don't turn them into something they're not. They don't need to be a good salesperson to sell. I've said that on this podcast for, for years. You do not need to be a great salesperson in the old sense of the word, in the old antiquated, you know, convincing, you know, back scratching, back, well, back slapping, not back scratching, hopefully. That's a different kind of salesperson. Don't teach them how to be that because they're, they're going to resist. That's why they resist now. So what do you teach them? So we're, we're assuming the fact that you've got people who can be helpful to your clients. So here it is. Number one, they've got to have, and I'm going to talk about these three as attitudes, because to me, you can give them all the mechanics you want. 
if they don't have their attitude, their head screwed on straight, they're not going to use the mechanics. So attitude number one is the attitude of obligation. The attitude of obligation is that you've got to reframe selling in terms of obligation to share our story, our message, to understand their business, to understand if there's any other ways we can help them, any other problems we can solve. If your people don't feel obligated to do that for your client, maybe they shouldn't be part of your organization if there's no obligation. So we, we always say, and I know you've heard me say this before, I always say, oh yeah, we're customer service, we're into customer service, but we won't bring up ideas on how they can improve their business. How into customer service are you or are your people? doesn't sound like they're very into it. So if we can't change our mindset to, to get to one of obligation, we have to feel like we owe it to our client, in this case, customer client, to, to ask questions, to inquire, to understand their dilemmas so that we may, may be able to bring a solution to it. If they don't feel obligation, if they feel like it's some kind of a con game, they're not going to do it. So talk to them about attitude of obligation. I think it's really important. Number two is a cousin to this, but I think it's, it's separate enough that it has its own bullet here, and that is serving by solving. You serve by solving. What are you solving? You're solving a problem. What kind of problem are you solving in the customer's world? You're solving a problem they either know they have or a problem they don't know they have. And I don't care which one it is. I believe that your ability to help them see problems they don't know they have is a much richer, I think you make a lot more money in that in that realm because if, if they're coming to you with a problem, then maybe they haven't defined it. Anyway, the point is that if you're going to serve them, you've got to solve. And in order to solve, you have to find. In order to find, you have to understand, is it a problem they, they know they have or don't know they have? So let's say that one of your people is, is doing some client success work or they're serving, they're, they're managing the account and the account and your person sniffs around or you kind of sense that, oh, you know what, I don't think they're happy with that part of their business and we have a solution there. What do you do? Well, I'll give you one thing to do. Once you get this attitude right, and again, if you're just going to pick out this mechanic, this tip and give it to them, they're not going to use it. So, and then you'll blame me for it. Don't blame me for it. I'm telling you, you're not going to, they're not going to use the mechanics until they have the mindset. The mindset is served by solve. When you have that mindset, when you've immersed them in that, then you can come up with some kind of a, a piece of language. Like, look, you know, I, I thought I heard you say the other day that you had some issues here. At some point, would you like to talk about how we do that, how we can maybe help you, bring, bring a solution to you? Would you like to do that or not? That's really the first question. It's not presenting a solution because I don't even know if they have a problem that's worth solving yet. Or if they have a problem, maybe you misheard something. So serving by solving is the attitude. The mechanics are, I, I got the feeling the other day when we talked that you have this issue. Would you like to talk about it? See how simple that is? Number three attitude is the attitude of value. We'll just call it the value mindset. And if your people don't believe they bring value to the world, to their audience, to their customers, if they just believe that all you're doing is selling them stuff and there's no value to what you're selling them, then they're not going to broach the subject with your clients and customers about whether there's anything else there. So the accidental salesperson, the non-salesperson, non if they don't see the value they bring, then it's going to be even harder for them to bring this up, to broach the subject. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to your team, this accidental team, and I want you to have a meeting and talk, just, just have a conversation about what do you believe is the value that we bring to customers? And don't just, don't just set, be satisfied with, well, you know, we help them build a better company. No, I don't, that's, that's BS. I want deeper. I want deeper value. I want your people to say, we help people grow bigger companies so that they can take their wealth 
and create charitable contributions with it, and they can provide for their families, and they can walk in every day with certainty that their business is going to thrive or whatever. I want depth. And you know what you'll find? They don't know how to do that. They don't know how to say that. Now, it doesn't mean they don't believe that you bring value or they bring value, but they will not be able to characterize it. They'll be, not be able to give it voice. And that's what you're doing in this meeting. Because when everybody comes out of that meeting, having talked about and become and given witness to and witnessed the value that this is, is in this group, you won't believe the fire that those people will have to go tell the story. They will, have the, they will be lit up because now they believe they have something of value because you've talked about it and they can express it. And you might even role play a little bit with them. Have them you know, say, okay, how, how would you describe that? If, we're, if we you know, we're in a meeting and we're talking about something else and you sense there's something else that we can help them with, how, how do you bring that up? Role play a little bit. Let them practice. Don't make it the first time they ever say it in front of a $10 million current client. They're not going to say it. It's too much pressure. So those are the three things that I would do. I would start to get them acclimated to a new attitude, a new mindset. I've given you a couple of mechanical things that you can use. But it's really important, especially as you end 2024 or 2023, to get your non-salespeople acclimated to why it's so important that they sell. And that they have a, an attitude of obligation, an attitude of serving, and they understand their value. And when you get those th three things right, there's a lot that will change uh, with your accidental salespeople. So I hope that's helped you today. If you want to talk to me, you can go to BillCaskey.com. I want you to sign up for the personal business planning session on December 6th. If you want a magical, master of, masterful year in 2024, you got to have a plan. And I'm going to share a little bit more about that with you here. So if you're not connected with me on LinkedIn, make sure you do that too. Would love a review. I'm asking you all to do all these things. But at least check out the personal business planning session. The link is in the show notes. I'll see you next time. Bye.